Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo IdeaPad 730S. This is a relatively thin and light Ultrabook device powered by an Intel i5 processor. It's a pretty nice little machine here. We're going to be taking a closer look at it in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to it now and see what this device is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. These start at around $720, which quite honestly is not a bad starting price for what you're getting here. Inside, it's got an i5-8265U processor. It's got eight gigs of RAM that is not upgradable, uh, but it does have an upgradable 256 gigabyte NVMe solid state drive for storage. Uh, it's got a 1080p display here, 13 inches. It's a little shiny uh, and it's not a touch display. Now, the big difference between the idea pads and their yoga line is that the idea pads are laptops and not two in one. So this is about as far as the screen will go on the yoga. You could flip the screen around and use it as a tablet. What really struck me about it, though, is how light it is. Uh, it weighs about 2.43 pounds. Uh, that is about 1.1 kilograms. It feels really nice to carry around. Uh, it's not going to weight you down too much when you're walking around with it, and I really do like the way it feels. It's all metal, very high quality feel to it, and again, I don't think the price point uh, is too crazy on this one. Now, the battery life on this, we tested it around seven hours or so doing normal tasks like web browsing and email and whatnot. If you're doing more uh, strenuous kinds of activities and have the screen brightness turned up, that will impact the battery life a bit more. So the battery life is not spectacular on this, but it does charge quickly. Uh, so I would suggest keeping the power adapter with you uh, in the bag when you're traveling around with it. Uh, the keyboard is very nice on this one. It's pretty similar to other uh, ThinkPad keyboards. Decent key spacing, nice key size, great travel to it, really nice to type on. It is backlit, just a single white light on the back of it, but you can see it in the dark, so that's good. Uh, trackpad is also very nice, just like many of the other Lenovo trackpads we've looked at. It has a very responsive feel to it. Uh, it's not too spongy and something we found to be working quite nicely. I was quite pleased with the overall weight and balance of the machine here. Uh, I talked about how light it is, but it's also heavy enough on the base that you can lift up the display with a single hand without the bottom portion here flipping up on you. I thought that was a nice little touch. We don't often see that uh, on these Windows laptops. This one is pretty well balanced. Now, given that this is a thin and light ultra book, Lenovo has gone in the path of USB Type-C for its port selection. Now, on the left-hand side of the computer, you have a USB Type-C port. This is a Gen 1 port, meaning that the maximum data rate for data devices is 5 gigabits per second. Uh, and it's where they recommend you plug the power adapter into. So this port will do data and power, but it will not do display output. If you want display output, you can do that on the other side, where you have not one, but two Thunderbolt 3 ports, which of course support USB-C, but also faster Thunderbolt 3 devices. Uh, these are four lane ports if you're interested in how much data these things can pass back and forth. So they're suitable for not only lower speed devices, but can also work well for external graphics processors, for example. And these also support power delivery too. So you can get video out, power in, and then of course all of your data devices working on these two ports. I'm really happy to see Thunderbolt ports making their way into a uh, sub $800 laptop. That's a pretty nice thing to see. It also has a headphone jack if you want to connect up a headset or something for uh, more private audio. And of course, it also supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well. So let's move on now to performance. We'll start off on my YouTube channel running a 1080p 60 video. Everything here is running just fine. There's no drop frames and everything uh, from a streaming video standpoint looks to be pretty good on here. And I would expect that out of an eighth generation Intel processor. Uh, we also went over to the nasa.gov homepage to see how fast everything rendered up when connected via Wi-Fi and everything looked just fine from that perspective as well, again, as expected. Now we also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test and there we got a score of 147. That does put it pretty much in line with what we've seen on other devices using a similar processor that we've tested in the past. Uh, that score was on the version 1.0 of the test 
On version 2.0, we got a score of 84.18, again, about where we would expect these processors to perform. And remember, last year's chips from Intel were running as dual-core processors in this class of computers. Now they are quad-core, so if you have applications that take advantage of those multiple cores, you will see better performance this year uh, versus last year because of that. And we also ran our usual Microsoft Word test. Everything was very responsive and snappy when we were moving things around in the newsletter template that we like to work with. So I don't think you're going to have any issues doing uh, work on this one. It's really designed for this kind of thing. And overall, it was a very good experience. So let's move on now to gaming. And you'll find this is not going to be a gaming powerhouse. You can see Fortnite running right now at around 25 to 40 frames per second at the lowest possible settings. We were seeing a lot of thermal throttling perhaps going on here, which is why the performance was so uneven. We'll talk more about cooling in just a second. Uh, we then booted up Rocket League, which can be a little bit more forgiving on computers that don't have a discrete graphics processor built in like this one. Uh, there we were seeing about 70 frames per second at 1080p on the lowest possible settings. So not all that bad, but again, not a very pretty image you'll see on screen. When we turned those settings up to high, we were getting around 25 to 30 frames per second there. Somewhat playable, but again, not as good as what you'll see on a gaming laptop or desktop computer. And then for the heck of it, we threw The Witcher 3 at it, which of course is a very involved AAA title from about a year or two ago. Uh, that one barely cracked 10 frames per second at the lowest possible settings. So you could probably do well with older games on this one and maybe some of the uh, more casual games, the retro-inspired ones you might find on Steam, for example, should be fine. But anything that requires more uh, graphical horsepower, this is really not going to be able to deliver unless you hook up a GPU to the Thunderbolt ports here on the side. Uh, that will certainly give you a pretty dramatic performance boost depending on which GPU you choose. And check out the video we did on that topic a few months ago down below in the video description. Now in the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 8,909. Uh, that actually puts it pretty much right in line with other machines we've looked at recently running with the same or similar processor. So Performance-wise, this is performing as expected, but again, uh, not very well suited for high-end gaming unless you plug in that eGPU, and then it's far less portable when you've got that thing attached. Now, when you put one of these more powerful Intel chips into a package this thin, cooling can be an issue. And what they've done with this one is added a secondary venting system on the keyboard. So it's drawing air in through the top of the keyboard, but it's also drawing air in from the bottom and it's exhausting it under the hinge here like we've seen on many other laptops out there. The fan is smaller as a result of this, and it's not that loud, but you will hear it. And it's often hard to talk about fan noise because everyone's perceptions of what the fan noise should or shouldn't be is different, but we found this one to be quieter uh, than some other laptops we've looked at recently that have larger fans. So if you put it under load, you're gonna hear that fan running, but again, not that loud and not that distracting. But if you want something completely silent, you might want to look for something powered with an Intel Y-series processor that often come in fanless varieties. Uh, this one, again, will have the fan and it will kick on when you put the computer under load. Now, in the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing score of 86.8%. Passing is 97%. Uh, that is not unusual on an Ultrabook for it to fail. It's something that uh, is quite common with these, given how thin and light they are. There's just not enough room to get uh, air moving in and out of it effectively to keep the processor cool. Uh, so what these machines do, in addition to having the active cooling of the fan, uh, is that it will slow the computer down so that it can consume less power and therefore generate less heat. Once it gets that heat out of there and the temperature comes down, it can then uh, ratchet the performance back up. And that's usually okay if you're doing word processing and email and some of the basic work tasks, but it's something you might notice if you're doing video editing or playing games, for example, you will see performance fluctuations as you uh, place the computer under load for sustained periods. And that's probably where you may want to move to something larger that has more effective cooling. Now, again, this is not out of the ordinary for a computer in this form factor, just something to keep in mind when you are considering the type of things you might do on it. 
One last thing to check out, and that is its Cody performance. We ran one of the Jellyfish test files that has an HEVC video 10-bit, 140 megabits per second at 4K. Uh, the laptop was able to effectively decode that video, which can be challenging on some older machines. It was doing that without any drop frames, and that is a uh, feature of these uh, newer Intel chips to be able to decode all of that in hardware. So all in, a very nice little Ultrabook. If you understand the thermal limitations of these little devices, this one I like quite a bit, uh, given that its price I think is pretty reasonable for what you get, and it's exceptionally thin and light, and it feels just really nice to walk around with. It almost uh, surprises you by how lightweight it is. I really like how well balanced it is, especially when you lift up the display here and don't take the rest of the computer with you. Uh, that's a nice touch to see that they put in some thought as to how to get everything to work properly. Again, no touch screen on this, but a, a very nice IPS display that has uh, decent viewing angles and overall a very nice portable computer uh, that I think might be very effective for people looking to do work on the go. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Anuj Zaveri, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.